All right, so there are a number of different stages. We're just going to go through the first two in this class. So what are the stages? Setting objectives. What are the objectives of your usability testing? What do you want to find out? You guys have already done this. Right, and then creating your test plan. You don't have to create one for this class, but you'll see that you're still going through the actual process you would go through. You're just not actually creating a document for this. Preparing and creating the needed documents, selecting test participants, performing the test, conducting the pilot and final tests. In this case, we actually are, are not really doing pilot and final tests, but in industry that's very common. The pilot test is where you are testing your methodology. The final test is where you are actually testing the product and analyzing and presenting your data. This is what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks. All right, so setting your objectives. I bet you guys didn't realize you already set your objectives. Who knew that? I don't know if you didn't know or if you're just not answering because you're so quiet today. All right. When you are setting your objectives, this is primarily occurring when you are actually creating your user or going through your user or task analysis. When you are looking at the product, you're seeing what the product is about. You're scoping that product and seeing what are some of the things that we may want to test. So this includes, in this case, selecting the product because there may be cases where you work for a corporation that has many products. And then looking at it and deciding what are some of the tasks? What are some of the goals that we want to try to find out about? But here's the trick. You need to make sure it's something that's measurable. And you want to make sure that when you are setting your objectives, what are some, you know, what are some of the things you need to think about? What are some of the things that I've told you you need to think about? Who the user is, that's number one again, right? Who is your user? What they're trying to accomplish. So what task is it that, that they need to be performed? And then third, when I tell you to create your click streams, do you know what that is? Performance criteria. What do you expect your users to be able to do? How do you expect them to do it? What steps do you expect them to take? And how do you determine whether they have accomplished it or not? For that, you need your, your click streams. Now, of course, in developing all these things, you need to think about looking at various aspects of good usability. So all the things that we've learned. The most commonly, one, commonly uh, used ones are ease of learning, efficient, efficiency of use, memorability, but you want to think about all of these things that we have learned about what makes something usable. Now, there are two things that you want to add to it that we really haven't talked about in this class very much. Error frequency and severity. I talked about it a little bit, but I don't know if you guys you actually remember when I talked about it. Another thing you need to look at when it comes to your users and your usability testing, including in your group project, are errors when they make mistakes. And it's not just did they make a mistake. Right? You want to look at how often do users make mistakes. Right? If you have a, your users do a task and every user makes a mistake in that task, think that tells you something? Yeah, the answer is yes. How serious are those errors? Right? Is it a critical error? Is it a minor error? Because a lot of times when you have errors, you're going to have to look at what are the issues that need to be worked on and fixed and prioritize them. That's the nature of the beast. You're not going to be able to fix everything. And how do users recover from these errors? So if a user makes a very common error, but it takes them half a second to recover from it. Let's say you compare that to another error that maybe it's not quite as frequent, but has, ser is, has very serious implications. 
and takes five minutes to recover from or is not recoverable, which one are you going to prioritize as being more important to fix? The unrecoverable one. So you need to look at all these aspects. And then there's also subjective satisfaction. How does the user like using the system? We have a tendency to forget that this is really a very important aspect of usability because it's very fluffy. Right? It's kind of all, you know, fluffy and holistic, which we don't think of when it comes to technology. But very critical. There are a lot of different ways that you can measure user performance. I think I mentioned last time that I noted that some groups will actually time their participants. Right? So you, are, you, know, you can do that. They will actually do analyses to see how long does it take to complete a task. How long does it take for them to even figure out how to do a task? Right? So for example, if you want to measure learnability, you can time a novice to see how long does it take them how to learn how to do a task. You can then, in your design process, look at that compared to efficiency. You can look at your intermediates and time them. And that helps you with this balance. For measuring efficiency, how long does it take an expert to complete the task? <coughs> in your mind, you do have to define what you mean by an expert or, an, or experienced users. Measuring memorability. Now, this tends to be one that's a favorite, right? Because we're at a university, we get tests all the time, right? It actually is pretty difficult, right? In fact, many argue it is the most difficult. Because finding casual users, people who don't use products really on a regular basis, can be pretty difficult. But even let's say you can accomplish that. Can't you just give them a test? A memory quiz? Here, use the product. Oh, here, here's a quiz. What do you think of that approach? Not such a good idea. Do you guys like tests? Yeah, I don't know anyone who likes tests. They have a participant, they come in, they're helping you, you say, here's your test. They're going to look at you. Yeah, see you later. So it's not going to work well with your participants. And also, there's actually research that finds that those tests are really misleading in terms of what users really do and do not memorize. You want to make sure that you are measuring errors. Classify your errors as major versus minor. Make sure that you are measuring things like your user satisfaction. For that, you're going to use a Likert scale. I'm going to talk to you about specifically about Likert scales next week. Now, as you are developing your tasks and your plans, there are a couple of things that I just want to make sure that you keep in mind. A lot of times we see a one-to-one -one correspondence between, I'm going to test this and it's going to tell me this. It doesn't actually work that way. You may have a single usability test that may actually give you insight into several aspects of the design. So you need to remain open to that. You may actually see that. Make sure you write that down. Very, very common. Now, Although we don't have cross-functional teams in this class, in industry, this also emphasizes why you want cross-functional teams, because they are going to have different perspectives of the product and the users. Remember, like way back when, at the beginning of the semester, when we talked about m these multidisciplinary teams? You guys remember that? Yes? This is an area where it's really critical. You go out in industry, you're going to find that you have very cross-disciplinary teams when it comes to usability testing. The most common are a mix of psychologists and computer scientists or IT people. But you will also get the you know, business, people who are part of the business or the management team. Because you're going to have different perspectives. And when you are dealing with a real usability test, you have to also Make sure that you talk to your stakeholders and talk to 
whomever, whomever has hired you because you want to focus on the objectives that are most important to success of the product. Sometimes when you have groups of developers, for example, that are working on specific aspects of a product, what do you think is most important to them? Whatever they happen to be working on. That's not always what's most important for success of the product. So you need to be able to step back and take that objective viewpoint. All right, I'm going to give you a few examples. This will also give you a little bit more insight into the detail that you want to have in your tasks. All right. Novice PC users can change the ink cartridge in their color inkjet printer in less than five minutes using the user manual. Now, now that we've gone through creating a task in class, we've talked about some of the things you want to make sure we have in there. What are some of the components that you see in here? What are you identifying? Type of user. The type of user. In this case, it's a novice PC user. What else? The task. The task. And what is the task? Change the cartridge. You want to change the ink cartridge in a color inkjet printer. What's the performance criteria? Less than five minutes. In less than five minutes? Using, like using the manual. Yes. So you see how it breaks down? This also makes it very clear exactly what you're looking at. You're not looking at uh, perpetual intermediates. Right? You have, very, you have a very clear, explicit performance criteria in less than five minutes using our user manual. All right, let's go to our next one. Users will be able to install and configure the default application in less than 15 minutes. What about this one? It's general. It's a little bit more general. So we're not specifying who our users are or the application. So this is something, if you're going to word it like this, it has to be really very much in the context of the particular application. But again, it does have our performance criteria. Users should rate the product as either easy to use or very easy to use, four or higher on a five-point scale. <laughs> what about that one? Do we have performance criteria there? You sure? Right, so the performance criteria is they're going to rate it as either easy to use or very easy to use. This is to clarify, further clarification of what we mean. What are we asking the, the users to do? To rate the product. So in this case, this is something that would go in your exit questionnaire. Still has to have these components, though. When you create these things, it makes it so much easier to create your final report. Much, much easier, because now you can go back to these and discuss your objectives in your final report very easily.